Hello and welcome to Random Things. This is Ty. Today I'm going to unbox this XC27 from North Rock. This is a standard mountain bike, so it's got the 2.3 inch wheels as opposed to like a fat mountain bike or fat bike, fat tire bike, which is 4 inch wheels. So this one I got at Costco.com. Um, it's $449 plus tax and delivered to your door. It's under $500. Bucks. So it's actually not a bad price. So let's go ahead and unbox it and see, uh, see what we get. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this to the side. This is your uh, bike seat. Okay. Uh. All right, there you go. So as he says, you unbox, just go ahead and start throwing stuff. Well, I'm gonna leave that on actually, because I like to keep the handlebar protection on. Um, while I'm assembling because at some point you're gonna flip the bike upside down onto its handlebars So I want to still protect the handle grips when I do that part. So I'm gonna leave that on so when you are taking apart you are Wrapping it's always good to have a pair of tin snips um, It's a lot easier than using a box cutter and a lot safer than a pair of scissors or a box cutter and so just get a pair of tin clips snip if you have it and you can snip these really big zip ties undo the just make sure you clip the zip ties and not the cables because the tin snips will cut the cables I don't know how they do this rubber band thing. Come on, rubber band. Okay. Set the wheel down. Okay. So. So if you looked at my other video, um, I unboxed a XC00, which is their North Rocks fat tire bike. Um, this is their standard mountain bike. And so one of the key differences between the standard mountain bike and the fat tire bike was that the bottom bracket is actually 68 millimeters, 2.75 inches, roughly as opposed to four inches on the fat tire bike. Okay, seat post. Let's get that in. Again, I like to keep the paper on it just in case. Okay. Fork around. Okay. So this tell you where the front, right? So it says front right there. And then here's the uh, the handlebars. Make sure you cut the right cable, not the cables, but the zip ties. Okay, so there's some notches here. I guess they're like anti-slip grooves that they engraved 
etched onto the handlebars. So that will go into this part of the gooseneck. So let me loosen that part up. Let's see if it comes with tools. Because there is a box of parts. So let's see. Okay, in the box of parts, you have some your reflectors, and some tools, and some screws. I'm presuming these screws are for the kickstand. You have the front axle, quick release axle, pedals. Okay, so we're gonna need those. Well, fell off. Okay, so we're gonna need this to take that off. But, because I just unboxed the XC00, I have a spare one. So what I did is I took a grinder and I cut off this Allen wrench and I stuck it in my drill. And so that will make this part faster, I hope. You know, sometimes when you build enough stuff, they always give you like throwaway tools. Um, instead of throwing it away, I take a little cutoff saw, cutoff wheel, and I cut off the Allen wrench. And then I can just put it in my drill and that really... Saves me time from going. But you want to put it on the lower speed. Make sure you do the chuck so that it, the brake is easy so that you don't strip these screws. Because um, that's the problem with going fast is you run the risk of stripping. Okay, but let's make sure the cable's in the right spot. That way you have plenty of churn. It doesn't get caught up. Let's just get it hand tightened in there. Make sure you don't lose the lock washer. That's part of it. I'm going to loosen the reflector piece. That way it's out of the way. So let me just center this. We'll get it kind of tight before we really cinch it down because this is also how you rotate it so that the thumb shifter and the brakes are in the, I guess, comfortable position. I don't want to say right, correct position because that's not really what's happening here. So right now the brakes are pointing up in the air, so we want to have this loosen up so that we can twist it so that it's in a comfortable position for you. I'm actually going to use the hand method. Don't strip the uh, the grooves. I'm gonna turn this. So if you notice this little upper curvature, they put these little upper curvatures in so that for those of us who don't like to bend over too far, um, it's helpful when the handlebar is a little raised. And so I'm gonna have that in that position 
for me so that I have maximum height on the handlebars. If that still is too far forward when you're riding because you're old like me, you may have to raise the gooseneck. So let me get this centered again. And then we'll go ahead and tighten her up. And then we'll finish off with the hand. I didn't want the uh, the drill to over tighten. I'd rather do that part by hand. That way I have a good feel for exactly how tight I torque down on it. Okay. So, handlebars are on. So let's go ahead and put the wheel on. Okay, looks like some assembly is required here when it comes to the actual brakes. So let's take a look what I'm looking at here. Okay, so this is the front disc brake assembly, and I'm guessing it goes like that. And I need to find the little screws for that. I'm guessing that was the screws that was in here. Where do you go? Uh oh. Now I gotta go find it. That's interesting. Oh, the kickstand is here already. Kickstand is already mounted, so you don't have to mount that. Not sure for the reason why the brakes were not assembled upon arrival. But no big deal, just two screws. We won't tighten it down completely until after we get the wheel on because there is a little bit of play back and forth so that you can get your disc brake in there or disc in there in between the disc brake pads so let me loosen that so that there's still a little bit of play so that we can slip it in there correctly all right let me get this wheel set up Okay, so the bike has the quick release on the brake side, so I'm going to be consistent with the front wheel so that it is consistent with the back wheel. 
So the quick release lever will be on the disc side. This side, two springs, right? Skinny part pointing in. Put that on. Okay. All right, so let's see if we can slip this in easily. Then we'll adjust. There we go. Okay, so the way I was taught about these quick release levers is that you want to tighten it so that it's halfway and it's snug, push out the three. The lever handle should be pointing up the fork, not down the fork. The concept is that if you hit a rock and the rock kicks up and hits the handle, it's a greater chance of the handle coming loose if it was pointing towards the ground as opposed to pointing up towards the handlebars. Plus you can grab the handlebars, I mean the metal part, and help you crank down. Okay, so now that I have the disc in there, I'll tighten up that part. It's like toilet paper falling. So that the disc is in centered. I'm sure there are tons of great videos out there to show you how to do this part correctly. So I'm a novice at this. I'm going to admit that up front. Please, if you don't know and you're unsure, go ahead and look at some of the more professional videos. This is just an unboxing. All right. Front suspension. Okay. Let's see. Huh, all right. So, pedals in the box. Now, it does come with left pedals and right pedals. And the reason why they mark it for the left crank and the right crank is because the left crank is reverse threat. And so you wanna make sure you use the right pedal label on the right side. No pun intended. So right. left left so it's reverse thread so you make sure you turn it in the reverse direction and not keep spinning it the other way like i did earlier with the other bike make me look make me feel a little foolish okay that should be like a number 15 yep so full disclosure, I bought this bike to convert it into a mid-drive e-bike. So I have a 1000 watt Bafang mid-drive motor that I'm going to mount on here with a 21 amp hour battery that I'm going to mount onto the bottle rack. Um, but one key thing when you are considering that is you need to know the bottom bracket width. And that's not some information that they typically give you when you go through the specifications. For this one, it is 2.75 inches, roughly. And so when you go to buy the motor, you want to spec out the one that's for 68 millimeter bottom bracket distance. Okay, that way you have the right bottom bracket um, and not one that's too long. The other thing is, um, when you have the bike upside down, the serial number is usually stamped onto the bottom bracket 
you want to take a picture of that so that you record the serial number um, because in the event that your bike gets stolen, um, you're probably not ever going to see it again. But just in case the cops decide to get lucky and find it, they're going to try to look up the serial number and see if the bike is registered and reported stolen. And if it is registered and reported stolen, they look it up by the serial number and then they can contact you so you can pick up your bike again. Yay, if that happens to you. So, very important, get the serial number off the bike, on the bottom of the bike, and then register your bike. So, with that, I think that's it. That was uh, pretty quick, I guess, when they said 95% assembly, assembled. They actually weren't, weren't joking. It is pretty much assembled. So, that's a pretty nice looking bike. Um, again, so I am 5'8", and they say that you're supposed to have about 2 inches of clearance when you stand up. I don't really have that 2 inches of clearance. But, you know what? That's okay. Just don't jump down and rack yourself. So that's pretty much it for the unboxing. I mean, obviously I still have a little bit of tidying up to do, but um, for the most part, the bike is ready to go, ready to rock. So that is a pretty nice feature that it comes mostly assembled. Um, so with that, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like and share button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. That will really help me out. Again, I am going to be converting this bike into a mid-drive e-bike. So look for the video that is the next part to this where I've actually converted it and see how it works. Let's see how I like it. I don't know how I like it yet. And so with that, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.